we counted half a dozen choices to make. Indeed, some of these six choices involve sub-choices. But let's focus on how much discretion you have in making these decisions. The first choice, in some ways, is the most important. You can think of the choice of data to use as a combination of art and science. To be sure, there are statistical criteria you can use, like cross-validation, that can tell you how best to carve a data set into a training group and a testing group. But you have great discretion into how you carve the data history. Should you use the last six months of data, or should you find a time period that is more similar to now which, which hasn't occurred for a number of years. Which backtesting criteria can you use to decide how to divide the data into training and testing? Should you penalize the errors in testing much greater than the errors in training? Should you include data on days that are not representative of the overall population? For example, before major holidays, financial markets tend to close early, or should you include these as half days? None of these choices are wrong, but you will discover that some choices work much better than others. Why? Because you find the data you've selected to be more relevant to what you are trying to predict. When you make the second and third decisions, you are deciding on the best values of P, D, and Q. Fortunately, there are automated systems that can guide you to what is optimal. So you will find that this choice is more of a science. You may even decide to run a model on levels and a model on differences. You will find that choice of a REMA form is another tough decision that is part art and part science. Here is what my experience and expertise in selecting the specific form of a REMA is. A traditional REMA model may oversimplify the problem. On the other hand, a more complicated seasonality model may overcomplicate the problem. The fifth decision is the choice of estimation method. I usually defer to software. Most time series software has an accurate and robust implementation of these optimization methods. You may not realize which optimization to use. This happens because often software or running ARIMA models uses suitable defaults. If you dig deeper, you will find options to choose different estimation models. Also, you have the ability to tweak the models. Yet there is still some art involved because you may have to decide which methods tend to work best on which problems. Also, you may notice a problem with starting values. Typically, these optimization methods need guesses or starting values. The optimizer then starts at those points and searches the space to minimize the discrepancies. Many algorithms have a common weakness. If they start at a certain point, they may get trapped into a local minimum. This gives a solution, but it is not the best one. In fact, it may be far from the optimal one. Therefore, when you choose a method of estimation, you have to choose how to run the model. You may need to run it with many different starting values. You can then see if these lead to the same final results. Often they will not but you can certainly use the next decision to resolve that problem. The sixth decision is mostly science. You may have run multiple forms of the model with different estimation methods and even different software. In the end, each model gives you a quality score. We discussed these in a previous section. You simply choose the model with the optimal value. Recall that you may have more than one way to evaluate the quality of fit. In cases where one metric favors one model and a different metric favors a different model, then you have discretion. 